Hello, ladies and gentlemen, just here. Uh, just wanted to show you, um, I think, uh, quite uh, instructing game. This is from current uh, uh, this internet, uh, internet rapid, and uh, it's a game between uh, uh, Niemann and uh, Yuen Yun, uh, women world champion. And uh, Niemann, I, uh, Hans Moke, um, United States player, I saw him. Uh, is very young and uh, kind of has, uh, you know, uh, champion's mindset. Yeah, he looks very confident and uh, he doesn't, um, uh, you know, care about who he plays against um, and still uh, gets very good results. So let's see this game. Uh, D4, knight f6, g6. Bishop g7. So uh, Hans goes for the skins Indian defense. Uh, for young players, very uh, very natural to play such um, aggressive openings. For instance, Nakamura played it uh, until a year uh, until he became like 20 years old, and then he switched to, uh, with all exceptions to the Nimzo um, Indian defense. Yeah. Um, um, because it's more solid and for these young players it's uh, more common to play as sharp as possible d6 knight to d7 uh, i had this position with white and black um, i didn't play knight to d7 though i played something like a6 knight c6 uh, and e5 um, so black uh, counter attack in the center e4 and takes. Uh, so uh, when I was uh, uh, in chess school, I was, uh, I mean, we never played like this, but uh, Engine now shows this line a lot. Yeah, he likes the capture in the center and puts uh, his rook to e8. Um, it looks good for start, but um, uh, we'll see what problems black faces later in the game. Knight to c5, h3, uh, taking this g4 square. So um, white, as long as white has a lot of uh, space, they don't want to allow black to make any exchanges. So they want to pull, like move this slice square bishop to d7, but then these pieces are all clumped up and it's very uh, inconvenient for black to play. Rook e8, uh, rook e1, nothing to say here, h6, uh, basically with the same idea, but I think uh, already here uh, black faces, black just makes uh, logical moves, yeah, but uh, we see that their counterplay is stuck, yeah, you don't, your knights are very well placed, but um, uh, that's it basically. You need to create tension in the center, but again, it's not possible because uh, you don't want to play a five. It uh, weakens your your king too much. A five, B three, and uh, uh, knight to D seven. So this is like um, according to engine, this is the losing move already. Um, C six uh, was so much better. Um, uh, just uh, playing like an engine, but uh, again, if you play like this, you have to know what you go how you're going to defend this d6 uh, pawn. And I, I'm not sure I would play this um, myself uh, because it's really hard to defend. Yeah, just bishop f4 and white has so much pressure against the black's position, but engine thinks otherwise. f4. Uh, move I wouldn't do. Uh, bishop e3 is also is according to engine the best, but um, you don't want to shut up, shut down this e file for this uh, rook. Yeah, so um, uh, white just takes a lot of space here. Knight b6, opening up the bishop. Bishop e3 and bishop to d7. So. Uh, Basically, uh, black spent two tempi on this knight maneuver, and I'm not sure what's, what it, it is doing there. I think it's 
overall hunt strategy to play as quickly as possible and maybe wait for um, uh, I mean for some complications in the center where he can show his ability to calculate really quickly but it's not like uh, you know the smooth has a lot of sense in it uh, knight uh, to b5 now c6 is not possible because d6 is hanging so he traded uh, and white got to bishop so notice that uh, how white uh, gets uh, advantage one by one first they gain space then they force basically black to give up their bishop um, and uh, now white has uh, two bishops and in this position i'd say that um, uh, white has material advantage yeah because the position is pretty open it's not closed it's semi-open let's say and with two bishops uh, white will always have uh, quite significant advantage. In, in this posi position, engine says that it's plus two for white. Uh, knight d7, just uh, making moves. Rook c8 uh, in order to move the queen. And uh, again, um, I played the game against uh, uh, one girl. She's an A player, but uh, I won it. And she started uh, I was much better with with black pieces, and uh, um, she started offense in the center uh, complications, and I, I uh, like um, uh, won, but I defeated her. But the problem with uh, her play was that she didn't play this move like rook to d1 or rook to e1. Yeah. The rook just stayed on h1, and of course I had, uh, as long as I was much better developed than I was better with all the tactics which happened on the game. But at this point, never uh, when you have comfortable position, when you don't have to rush, you just have to develop your pieces. Don't forget about it. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, she saw that her pawn is attacked, she defended it, h5. Engine says that g5 is a move here. Uh, not a big difference actually, but uh, engine wants to create tension. Yeah, if you play f5, then it's actually black who is better, yeah, because they have this grasp on the dark squares, yeah, so. Um, Engine continues like a3, yeah, but uh, g5 is a more complicated move. a5 is uh, just, you know, another quick move by Hans. Queen d2, h4, g4. Definitely you don't want to break up your nice center. Uh, g5, and uh, this is the move of the game here. Uh, again, many of you would play f5 and give up all the advantage. Uh, which is like uh, basically uh, blundering a piece. Uh, he, uh, but she played this very good e5 move. Yeah, it. Um, um, she wants to, um, you know, if black takes, then uh, they cannot put a piece on e5. It takes too much time and effort to do that. And when uh, you cannot place your piece here, then uh, white is just better. So very nice maneuver. She took the pawn, knight to c3, knight d5. So if she moved uh, her knight, uh, knight to a more active square, goes back queen f2 uh yeah i would play bishop g3 here i just um uh, i don't think it's a good idea to you know let your opponent to capture this very good bishop but hans didn't take it knight f6 and uh, queen to h6 um the problem for, uh, again, for black, black has now some means of counterplay, obviously. Uh, they have this f4 square and uh, uh, white is pawn up, they have two bishops. So white, um, and white has more control of the center. So um, some compensation for, for white here. 
condition G3. Um, H4. Now, uh, White's idea is to uh, push these pieces back, or if they trade everything, I think they will have very good chances to win an endgame. And uh, of course, the trades should be favorable, favorable for uh, for White at some point, and they want to, you know, uh, push these knights from this outpost and uh, make Black's life uh, very uncomfortable h5 he takes and knight goes to f8 um, so if we capture here uh yeah uh, white has uh, this uh, intermezzo move taken there and uh, black just collapses he goes back defends the pawn rook to d1 now uh, uh as long as um, black tries to attack the spawn, uh, white has time to create their own threats. And uh, also this g5 at some point will be deadly yeah, to fork to, to minor pieces and win. Uh, knight to g5. According to engine, he should have either uh, taken here and uh, king h7 and g5. Yeah, just... Uh, Probably uh, white is winning, but um, black has some compensation uh, after the spin. But uh, he played more uh, aggressive, knight to g5, which appears to be a blunder. So ch uh, gave check. This is the only move. Bishop takes. And after this move, uh, black resigned because it's um, basically mate into. Uh, rook h8 mate and you don't you have to defend with something like uh, knight to g6 but it's anyways mate in a couple of moves all right um, thank you very much for watching and uh, see you next time